started in composting, there are just four basic ingredients for any backyard compost pile. That's carbon, nitrogen, air, and water. Carbon comes from materials such as leaves, newspaper, uh, dead plants. Those things tend to be pretty high in, in carbon. Your nitrogen comes from materials such as grass clippings, food scraps, um, alfalfa, um, probably not a very common material for people, um, but food scraps can be a great source of nitrogen um, along with grass clippings for, the, for someone who might live in the suburbs or in the city. So, in a good compost pile needs a chemical ratio of 20 to 1. Well, I doubt that you really want to go out and analyze your leaves or analyze your grass clippings. So a simple rule of thumb is to think two parts green material to one part brown material. The green materials are the nitrogen-rich materials I mentioned before, such as grass clippings, um, green plants, and food scraps. And the brown materials are those carbon-rich materials, such as leaves, or straw, hay, or even newspaper, if that's what you've got. Um, then the next step would be to decide where you want your compost. And I always recommend starting your compost pile in a place that's convenient to you. Um, in my compost pile at home, I had food scraps about once a week. So I've put my compost in a part of my backyard that's easy to get to. I wouldn't put it in the farthest corner of my backyard um, because I don't want to do anything to make it harder on myself to add materials to the pile. Um, um, having a container or some sort of structure will help to keep your pile more uniform. So not only does it look a little bit nicer, um, but it can help your pile heat up. Um, and your pile why does your pile need to heat up? Well, a good compost pile um, will give off heat as the material starts to break down. Um, and to really allow for heat to break up, think about making your pile um, have the capacity of a cubic yard. Uh, so think about a pile that's three feet high, three feet wide, um, and that can get you started. The earth machine has a capacity of about a cubic yard when full. Um, so it's, uh, it can be a good place for, for beginners and people who don't want to take the time to construct um, a bin. So you've got your carbon-rich materials, you've got your nitrogen-rich materials, which you might choose to save up in a, a bucket such as this. I keep this underneath my sink. So you want to start your pile just by layering those materials, your, your, your brown materials and your green materials. And as you build those layers, add water. Any organic matter needs oxygen and water to break down. So you want to add water until your pile has the consistency of about a, like a wrung out sponge. Um, and then your final step is simply to monitor your pile. You might choose to turn your pile once a week to help the material break down faster. Ideally, and there's some commercial compost bins um, that have a crank or they're built so that you can sort of kick them around on the ground to make turning even easier. Um, and, and it's really kind of an experiment. I was just telling someone here at Herb Fest that composting is an art, I think, as much as it is a science. So the, the more often you turn your pile, you're helping to introduce oxygen and help the material rot faster. Uh, if you turn your pile once a month, your compost will probably take longer to break down than if you turn your compost once a week. Like I said, composting can, you can put as much time into it as you want. Um, Something like vermicomposting is a good option for people who don't have a lot of time. This worm bin, this is a very small one, um, and it's really my demonstration bin, but I don't have to do any aerating. The worms do all the work for me, and they help break down that material. Right. Um, generally, I don't recommend that people compost meat and bones and dairy products because they will break down, but they can give off odors, and they might attract rodents. Um, but if you've got a large open space and you don't have a lot of neighbors nearby, you could try composting meat because the material will rot, and as long as you don't mind the smell and um, you know, aren't concerned about possibly you know, attracting rodents, then it, the material will break down. For, for somebody... Um, for somebody who's got neighbors all around them like I do, I, I, I definitely couldn't recommend composting meat. I always recommend working with what you've got. You know, in your case, you've got some really good sources because you do have chickens um, as well as the food scraps left over from your family. Um, other people, you know, might not be that fortunate. Somebody in a new development isn't going to have a lot of leaves um, in the winter. 
On the other hand, my home's an older home, got lots of mature trees in my yard. I always have oak leaves um, that I can compost. You can do either method. Um, building a pile all at once, like filling an earth machine, or even in my wire bins at home, um, when I can get enough material, I'll build an entire pile at once. And that's just because that's hot composting. And that's building a pile that's about a cubic yard is the way to go if you want it to heat up. Um, so if I fill my wire bins, which are about four feet tall, um, I notice that after about two to three days, my pile is warm. It's warmed to the touch. Um, on the other hand, it's sometimes of the year I can't get enough brown and green material. So I actually have three compost bins going at home. Um, one's a large pile um, that I started all at once, and I turn it about once a month, not as much as I should, um, and that material is breaking down. But I've got another bin where I'm just adding materials as I get them. So as I prune um, my bushes, I'm just dropping the material in there. When my azaleas finish pruning, finish blooming, I'll prune them, and I'll just put that material in there. And that's cold composting or passive composting. Um, and some of my friends who are professional composters like to say compost happens, and it does. You know, it, it can happen very slowly. If you pile leaves in your yard and did nothing to them, in a year they're going to break down, and you've got a wonderful material um, that's added nutrients to the soil. Um, on the other hand, if you need it compost in four months, then hot composting is the way to go, trying to build that, material, build that pile all at once and turn it once a week or every two weeks, and um, that's going to have compost ready for you faster. Uh, these products are all available at the City of Raleigh Yardway Center. The Yardway Center is located at 900 North New Hope Road in East Raleigh. It's open Monday through Saturday from 7 a.m. until 4 p.m. Um, the three products here, the wood chips, mulch, and leaf mulch, cost $15 for a pickup load. That's two and a half cubic yards. Uh, we don't deliver, but if you come to us with a pickup truck or another kind of open vehicle, um, we'll load it for you. Um, you, can, you also have the option of bringing your own container, such as an old trash can, and we will load that for two dollars per container. The compost is an aged product and it's a little bit more valuable, so it's a little bit more expensive. Um, loading your own container of, of compost will cost you three dollars per trash can or other container. If you want a load of compost, it'll cost you $20 for two and a half cubic yards.